Hi, I'm Doug Kalajan from the ArmenianKitchen.com, and today we're going to make Armenian coffee, which is a unique coffee, except for all the other coffee made in the Near and the Middle East. Really, it's all remarkably similar, all very strong, very flavorful, and very good. Much better than any coffee you'll get at your local coffee shop. You will need a little bit of special equipment and special coffee. The coffee you can get in any Middle Eastern grocery store or Greek grocery store, it is very, very finely ground, almost a powder. Really, it is a powder, and it's meant to dissolve in the water before you cook it. You also need an Armenian coffee pot, which is exactly the same as a Turkish coffee pot or a Syrian coffee pot. It's, it's this pot here. It has a very distinctive shape. It's wide at the bottom, narrow at the neck, and then it flares up again. And it has a long handle to protect your hand because Armenian coffee has to be made over a very hot flame. In the old country, of course, it would have been made over wood or coal. Here, a gas stove will do. We don't happen to have one. But we do have a butane burner, which is, uh, which is what caterers use, and here in Florida it's really part of our hurricane kit. And finally, you need the right coffee cups. You can use demitasse cups. If you have the real Middle Eastern coffee cups or the Armenian coffee cups from the old country, good for you. We don't, but these, these make a very suitable substitute. Now you must start with cold water. It doesn't have to be ice cold, but it has to be cold so that the coffee will dissolve properly. And you start off with one cup of water for each cup of coffee. And we're going to make four cups, so and now the coffee. You want to use heaping teaspoons, and I mean heaping. Look at this. Don't be afraid. Don't be cheap. This is what makes this coffee distinctive. And you stir it when the water is still cold and mix it in nicely. After you stir the coffee for the first time, add the sugar. The sugar is optional, but most people use it. You can use one level teaspoon for each cup or one level teaspoon for each two cups. It depends how sweet you like your coffee. And then on with the flame. Now, here is the secret to Armenian coffee. You have to watch it very carefully. You can't walk away because you don't want the coffee to boil. You want it to just approach a boil, and at that point, the coffee will foam. And when the foam forms, the foam will start to rise, and at that point, you must take it off the heat. Your timing must be impeccable. So I'm watching the coffee. This coffee is just starting to foam, and I'm going to get it off right now. And watch. I stir it just a couple of times, and then put it back on the flame. You want it to foam again. The coffee is just foaming for the final time. I wait until it rises, and I get it off the heat. You pour the coffee, a little bit of coffee, into each cup. little bit at a time. You don't pour all of the coffee at once because you want there to be enough foam to go around. As you can see, we have a nice frothy cup of Armenian coffee. Now, if that seemed like a lot of trouble for a tiny cup of coffee, it is, but it's worth it because this is wonderful, flavorful coffee. But for us, even more important, this is, a, this is a cultural link to the old world. This is the coffee that our grandparents drank. This is the coffee that my father drank when he was in just the right mood with just the right friends when they listened to the old music and they were sitting in the, in the living room of our home in New Jersey. But, but really, in a very real sense, he was 
back in Gevek here, or somewhere else in the old country. And when I drink this coffee, of course, I think of him and we think of our families. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. It is good. I'm Doug Kalajan from the ArmenianKitchen.com, where you'll find this and many other recipes.